In this video, you will learn about random forest algorithm for a regression problem. We will work on a bike rentals data set. The goal is to predict how many bikes would be rented per hour. Let's import pandas as pd. Import numpy as np. Import c1 as sns. Import matplotlib dot pi plot as plt let's execute our code i'll make one variable df and in this i will save the data frame from pandas i will call the method read underscore csv and i'll pass my csv file name bike underscore rentals dot csv let's look at the shape of our data frame i will write df dot shape and we have 731 rows and 16 columns. Let's look at the top 5 rows of our data frame. I will use the method head df.head and in the output you will see we got the data frame here and these are the columns such as instant, date time, season, year, month, holiday etc. Here count is our target variable. We have to predict how many bikes would be rented per hour and these are the counts. Let's look at the tail of our data frame. We will use the method tail df dot tail. And these are the bottom five rows of our data frame. We can also get some other information using the method info df dot info. And here you will see you got some additional information such as the column names, non null count and the data type. We can also get the descriptive statistics of continuous variable. I will call df.describe. Describe method will help us. And here in the output, you can see we got count, mean, standard deviation, minimum 25%, 50%, 75%, and maximum. So these descriptive statistics is for continuous variable or the numerical variables only. We can also find if there are any missing values in our data frame. And for that, we will use the method is null, df dot is null. Here in the output, you will see we got the result in boolean, true or false. So false indicates that these, these values are not null. But if we want to get the actual count column wise, we will add one more parameter df dot is null dot sum. So now with is null, we are also using the method sum. Let's execute our code. And here you will see we got the missing values column wise. So in year, we have one missing value in month one in the column humidity 3, wind speed 5 and so on. We can also get the total missing values and for that I will just copy this code from here and paste it here in this new cell. I will use sum one more time dot sum and here now you can see we got the overall missing values so there are total 12 missing values in a data frame df. Now we are going to drop these 12 missing values and to drop the missing values, we have to use the method drop na. I will call a data frame df. Then I will call the method drop na. And then I will pass one parameter in place is equal to true. So this operation will take place on our original data frame df. Let's execute our code. Now let's check again if there are any missing values or not. So I'll copy this code from here, paste it here and execute it. Now you can see in the output we, we got zero here because now there are no missing values. We have already dropped all the missing values. Next we will also drop one more column. So here you will see in our data frame we have column date time and if you see the other columns we have season, year, month, holiday, weekday. All this information have been extracted from this column date time. So now we don't need this date time column. This is not uh, of any use for us. So we are going to drop this column. Now let's drop it. I'll call df dot drop. And then inside this, I will pass the column name. The column name is date time. So I will write date time. Then I have to pass one parameter axis is equal to one because this is column and all the columns are on axis one. So I have type one for rows, it is zero. The next parameter is in place is equal to two. 
so this will this operation will take place on the original data frame let's execute our code so we have dropped that column and we can check that i will write df dot head and here in the output you will see we don't have the column date time because we have dropped that column next we are going to explore our target variable count and since this is a continuous variable we are going to make histogram to check the distribution of our target variable count so let's make a histogram so i will use the matplotlib plt dot hist and then i will pass the column name df of count then let's also give it a uh, give it label and like x axis and the y axis so i will write plt dot x label on x label we will write number of bikes and then y label plt dot y label on y label we will write frequency then plt dot show let's execute our code here in the output you can see we got the distribution of our target variable count so on x axis we have the number of bikes and the frequency next we are going to split the data set into x and y so i will make one variable x in x we will save all the independent variables i will call df then the method iloc colon colon means i want all the rows and the next parameter is colon minus 1 minus 1 means we want all the column except the last column that is the target column because this variable x will have only independent variable so we are not going to include the target column here the next is y we will do the same thing df dot iloc we want all rows comma minus 1 this time we just want the target variable that is why we are writing minus 1 and we are not using the colon here let's execute our code next we have to split this x and y into train and test data set and for that first we will need to import the function train test split from sklearn so i will write from sklearn dot model selection import train test split now i'm going to use this method to split our x and y into train and test so i will write x train y train no no i will write x test first x test y train y test then i will call the method train test split and i will pass x and y then random state this is the parameter and in random state you can put any number here let's write 100 you can put any random number here but if you want your result to be same as mine then you have to put 100 here let's execute our code now we can check the shape of our x train and y train so i will write x train dot shape in x train we have 540 rows and 14 columns let's also check for y train y train dot shape so in y train we have 540 rows we only have one column here in y train that is the count the target variable next we are going to import the class random forest regressor from sklearn dot ensemble import random forest regressor i am going to make the object of this class i will write rf so this is going to be object of our class and i will call the class random forest regressor now i am going to fit this on our x train and y train rf dot fit x train and y train let's execute our code so we have fitted the model on x train and y train now we are going to make prediction and save the results in a new variable i'll make one new variable y pred and then i will call rf dot predict and we are going to make predictions on the x train so i will write x test because uh, this test is for using the for making the predictions let's execute our code now i am going to print y pred so here in the output these are the predicted values for our x text 
so these are the predicted number of counts or the number of bikes that would be rented per hour next we will check the accuracy matrix from sklearn dot matrix import mean square error so we will find the mean square error i will call this mean square error and then i will pass y test and y pred and here you will see this is the mean square error for our y test and y pred now we can also find the root mean square error root mean square error is nothing but the square root of this mean square error i will copy this code from here now i will call from numpy i will call the method square root sqrt and then i will paste it here in the output you can see this is the root mean square error and it is 126 these errors should be as low as possible it should be as close to zero because these these are errors so the value should be as low as possible this video was about random forest regression in python i hope you enjoyed this video if you like my video please subscribe to my channel thank you for watching